Hello drummers and other creatures and welcome to 2023. I'm not really the type of person to recommend New Year's resolutions and stuff like that because the chances are you're just going to end up disappointing yourself and you'll feel worse than if you hadn't bothered in the first place. But some people really like the idea and I was thinking if you're going to go to the trouble it might as well be something like this. Everything I do is going to be funky from now on. Everything I Do Gonna Be Funky From Now On is a song written by New Orleans legend Alan Toussaint. He's an arranger, producer, songwriter and musician and was involved in recording and writing tons of stuff that you've heard of way back to the early days of R&B music. Uh, I first became aware of this song when I heard it played by Dr. John and the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. Uh, in the TV series Treme, which is all about New Orleans. There are lots of versions of this song. Most of them are pretty cool. Uh, Don Covey did a version. Lou Donaldson is really good. Alan Toussaint himself has recorded a version of it. But today we're going to look at the Lee Dorsey version that was released in 1969. And it was produced by Alan Toussaint. And I'm reasonably sure that the backing band is no other than The Meters, which means Maybe Zigaboo Model East played drums on this. I like to think so anyway. I uh, can't really find any evidence, but if you know anything about it, uh, please let me know. The groove of this song is very much a New Orleans second line influence groove. Uh, I'm not an expert on the subject as I'm obviously not from that area of the world, but it's a fairly typical example of the feel. You've got the syncopated pattern between the bass and the snare and uh, it's also a, a two bar phrase where the fourth beat of every second bar is accentuated. So let's have a look at what the, the ingredients are here. First and foremost, as I said, we're obviously we're in four four and uh, we're gonna be playing the hi-hat on the quarter notes uh, fairly lightly. Counting one, two, three, four. There's your hi-hat sorted out, or most of what you need to do. Then we're going to be playing a kind of a cross stick pattern on the snare. Uh, looking at the main groove of the song, we're going to be playing the snare on the two and four of the first bar, but just the two of the second bar. So we have this. And that leaves us a little bit of space for accenting the four of the second bar. Finally, the bass drum goes like this. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. And that is something that's very flavoursome with gumbo there. Did I get that right? Sounds a bit like this. Next, we're going to add the accent on the four of the second bar each time. Uh, one of the most common things he's playing there, uh, assuming it's Zigaboo or whoever played the drums, he or she, um, is an open hi-hat on the four, just to give us that feeling of accentuation. Now, when we talk about an accent, it's not a very, um, it's not a huge thing. It's a subtle, relaxed accent, okay? So we're gonna... Just open the hi-hat there on the four, like this. And that's the bones of the groove. There are a few different ways that you can hear uh, 
the emphasis or the accent on that four played, uh, and sometimes we get the, the three and the four accented. So we may play three, four on the second bar like this. Let's do it on the open hi-hat one more time. Next, we can accent on the cymbal. We can do it very lightly. We don't have to lay into it, as I was saying. Use your good judgment about when you need to give that extra note on the three. Ding, ding, like that. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo the cymbal. Listen to the song. Listen, it's kind of subtle. There's all sorts of little extra details coming in and out, but don't do too much of it. Finally, we can play on the floor tom, or the high tom if you like, or whatever, if you have nine million toms, any one of those other toms. But you can just give a little bit of extra meat. And towards the end of the uh, track, if you listen to the Lee Dorsey version, there's a little bit of tom coming in as well. So we're going to play that one also on the four, like so. Last but not least, you can add a little bit of spice by varying the bass drum pattern a little bit. As I said, we had the bass on the one, on the one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. So you could add the bass on some of the ands. For example, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. Or you could go, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. It sounds a little bit like this. There you go, a pretty simple groove for you to learn, a really nice introduction to New Orleans second line style, funky music, early R&B, that kind of thing, left for us, I believe, by Mr. Zigaboo Modelist. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching this. Let me know what you thought in the comments section, and don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel, and get in touch with me if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one drum lessons. I can help you with whatever it is you'd like to progress with. Meanwhile, I think it's time for you to go off and practice.